Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is me Siobhan. Welcome back to another Valentine's Day treat. Today we are going to be making a chocolate strawberry truffle. You guys, this was my first time making this cake and I am just so blown away by how good it was and how easy it was to make. But first, let's get into some black history facts. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Milwaukee Pastry Kitchen. It was established in 1940 in downtown Milwaukee, Oregon. It was the first black owned and operated bakery in the state when Hurtis Mixon Hadley Sr. and his wife Dorothy Butler Bishop Hadley of Portland, Oregon purchased it in 1977. At that time, there were fewer than 2% African Americans in that state and even fewer black owned businesses. Hadley learned his trade in Oregon's three-year bakery technology and apprenticeship program, completing and graduating from the program in two years, making him the first black person in Oregon to be state certified as a journeyman baker. According to Hurtis Hadley Sr., owning the bakery was tough. Not everyone was pleased to have accomplished black couple in their midst at the time or black people in a mostly all-white town. During that first year, he was falsely accused of robbing other businesses. Hadley said that after his first year, business and the general reception of he and his wife was well improved. The Milwaukee Pastry Kitchen was a full-line bakery that offered specialty breads, assorted pastries, and creative birthday cakes. Please take some time out and look up the Milwaukee Pastry Kitchen. Happy Black History Month! All you're going to need are three eggs. You're going to need a chocolate cake, heavy whipping cream, the chocolate pudding, some oil, strawberries. I use the strawberries in a can and a quarter cup of sugar. So basically you're going to just follow the instructions on the box cake for the chocolate cake. It calls for three eggs. So of course you crack three eggs. The instructions also call for one and a quarter cup of water. It also calls for a quarter cup of oil, so make sure you have that. I like to do the water first because my measuring cup, I don't want it to be mixed with oil and water. And then you are just going to beat it all together until it is a chocolatey, smooth consistency. Off camera, I sprayed my baking dish with some Pam. And now that everything is ready to go into the oven, it has been preheating at 350 degrees. So we are just going to pop that in the oven. Now it's time for the fun part. This was my first time making whipped cream, you guys. And the recipe called for a pint of heavy whipping cream. And you basically just beat it until it gets whipped. I'm gonna add in my quarter cup of sugar. But then I realized it didn't taste sweet enough. Off camera, I tasted it and I just added in maybe like a, mm, a teaspoon more of sugar. It wasn't that much, but you literally just whip it, you guys, until it gets thick and however thick you want it. I could have stopped here, but I really didn't want it this smooth. I wanted it like a chunky consistency. And you guys, I was just like so excited that I made my own whipped cream. Like, hello, who am I? Betty Crocker is here. <laughs> Now the cake is finished and you are just going to set it to the side and let it cool. We do not want to burn our fingers on this cake. You have to let it cool down. Now we're going to be making the pudding. The pudding is also very simple. You just follow the directions on the package. It just calls for one package of chocolate pudding and three cups of whole milk. I opted to do two and a half cups of milk because I like my pudding more chocolatey versus more milky. And now you are just going to whisk this pudding mixture for about five minutes until it gets thick. Um, I recommend that you take breaks every minute and a half so your arm and your wrist does not lock up. Do you guys see how thick the chocolate pudding has now become? This is the consistency that you are looking for after you finish whisk it for five minutes. Once you are finished whisking it, you're going to place it in the fridge so it can cool. 
the recipe does call for strawberries and to me I liked canned strawberries versus fresh strawberries I don't know why that's just my preference whenever it comes to desserts so you can use fresh strawberries it takes a little bit longer because you have to slice them up and place them into the mixture differently but I opted for the canned strawberries and I also like the syrup that the strawberries come in now that our cake has cooled, we are just going to make sure that it is separated from the pan and you are going to slice your cake into small cubes. So you're going to do um, vertically and then you're going to do it horizontally. Now that you have your cubes, you are going to take them and crush them up into your truffle glass serving bowl. I got this glass serving bowl from Target. It was $17. So if you are interested in this bowl, it is beautiful, very well crafted and worth every penny you're going to place one layer of cake and then you're going to do one layer of chocolate pudding you're also going to do one layer of heath crushed heath bars that's optional as well you're going to do one smooth layer of your whipped cream Here I like to place the strawberries on the outside layers of the truffle cake only because I kind of like to see it on the outside glass. It just makes for better appearance. You can add it all throughout but I like mine's just on the outside. And you are basically just going to repeat the same process until you get to the very top of the serving bowl. I know by the time that you all are watching this video it is already Thursday and I made this truffle on Tuesday and you guys by Wednesday evening there was no more. My kids, my mom and my husband tore through this cake. It was absolutely delicious. I guarantee you out of everything that I've ever made for you guys on this channel this is going to be the number one hit in your family. This is just so good I it it blew my mind and it was beyond my expectation of how good it was the only thing I wish that I did differently was that I wish that I had more Heath bars to add into the layers um, I was on like my last bag of, of Heath and I kind of had to use it sparingly but it the crunch that it gave it um i saw other people they used walnut and, and they used pecans and they used pistachios but the heath crunch bars oh my goodness it made it so much more better and as you guys can tell from a lot of my other sweet treat videos i love some heath crunch bars As we are putting together the last layer of the truffle, just a reminder not to push down too hard on the cake. You want your cake to have a little bounce to it. You don't want it to be flat like a brownie. So all you're going to do is just make sure you have all of your cake pieces in there, smooth on the rest of your whipped cream. And what I did was I added some strawberries right in the middle and some Heath bars around the strawberries to make it decorative. And it was really, really beautiful. And it tastes so good, you guys. I'm so happy that I did this recipe I really am like I'm just I was so blown away my family was blown away like we were like this is really really good and I can't wait for the rest of my family to try it the next time I make it I have to make it for like another event somebody's birthday or something you guys this was really really good so if you enjoyed this video please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you are new here welcome and if you like this video please make sure to subscribe trust me i have a big sweet tooth you will get treats like this all the time from me for my longtime subscribers you guys know i love you like i love to cook food i thank you so much for sticking around please make sure to subscribe you guys if you have not already Follow me over on Instagram so we can chat. Leave me a comment so we can chat. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, you guys.